Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Tea. Okay, today we're going to talk about connection and connection in detail. We've seen over the years many, many uh, directions from coaches on keeping the arms attached to the body and how you can do it by putting a towel around underneath the armpits, keeping it there while you swing, or a glove under one arm or a glove under this arm. But guys, I think connection is far more complex than that. I think it's the type of connection that you have and how you apply that connection in certain phases of the golf swing. I know myself personally, whenever my ball striking starts to deteriorate, it's always because I lose the relationship of that left arm, which I always feel is super glued to my, my pec, my upper arm there. The humerus is, is glued to my pec there. I feel that when I'm swinging well. And that enables me to swing well because it keeps this arm and this component here being the chest and this quadrant here, the shoulder, all moving at the same rate through the golf ball. Now when I get connect, disconnection and my arms tend to run off by themselves, they're going at a different rate to this. Clearly you can see that. If an arm sort of, you lose your connection there, this is going to either slow down or do something that is not in conjunction with the speed of this. And to be an accurate ball striker and a consistent ball striker, you've got to have, you must have consistency of arm and body speed and connection. Now guys, the way I do it, or the way I suggest you do it, the way you can learn it is buy yourself one of these. It's a pet shop dog bone. Now your puppy will pick it up and you'll squeeze it. Now, the advantage of this is that it's, it's an audible indicator. When I put it under this arm here, as soon as I apply pressure, I get an audible indicator that I'm applying pressure. Now, it's the type of pressure that I'm going to apply that's important. What I want to do to have consistency in my ball striking and quality of hit is to make sure that as I'm coming into the ball, I'm increasing the connection and holding the connection through the ball. I guess to, to probably categorize what I'm talking about and give you an example is that if this is going to squeak, then I want a long squeak as I'm coming in. I don't want to, which means I've, I've got connection but then I've let it go. I want that connection to stay as long as it possibly can throughout the shot. Now I'll show you a couple of examples. This is how you learn it. Get a wedge or a nine iron or something when you're learning. Just get the dog bone, put it under here. And what I do personally is I start to formulate my, my connection here. So I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm programming. Then all I want to do in the golf swing, in a little shot like this is So that's a perfect, beautiful little half three quarter wedge shot. Dead straight, really solid, and a fairly long squeak. Okay, so you're getting your idea, okay? We're, we're, we're programming the uh, connection, and we're gonna try and get a long squeak. Okay, that was a little bit, I want more of a, that's what I want. You want to practice on your own, guys, because if you start doing this on the practice tee, everyone will think you're nuts. I had an old lady here, she was about 70, and she was practicing down there, and I was doing this last year for some guys, some of my students. And, and I'm filming away, and I know she comes up here, and there's this woman walking around here. She clearly didn't know I was on camera, and I said, can I help you? She said, I can hear that animal. There's a distressed animal. I can hear it squeaking. Where is it? 
I said, it's under my arm, darling, here. She said, what are you doing that for? I said, I'll tell you when I'm finished the video that I'm doing. She thought it was a distressed animal. So guys, if you do it by yourself, you're going to look a bit silly. But the benefits, um, even though you're going to look silly, the benefits in playing are great. So, okay, to recap, we're going to get a little bit of, a little bit of um, compression here, and we're going to build that compression through the shot. Okay, you can hear that that's more of a, than a, I really want a long squeal out of this one. Let's get a long squeal. That's the one we want. That's a really sharp bang. And that, that is basically that one. I'm really hanging on. Okay, now, we don't want you to, in the golf swing, to keep that pressure there right through here because you'd be soaring off the golf swing. And clearly, in a proper swing, I would get the pressure here and then I'd let it go. So I hit a full shot with it and uh, we'll feel the, uh, hear the compression and I'll just let it out. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot, dead straight. Solid. And it feels leisurely because my arm is moving at the same speed as my body. I don't have, and when you're pitching the ball, uh, you, most people, you know, have their arms running off from their body. This is a perfect way to pitch the ball. I've got a flag out here at about 45 yards here on the green. I'm just going to feather in a little shot, 45 yards, and show you how much pressure you can have in a little shot like that. See, that's nearly gone in the hole. Okay, now there wasn't a lot of squeak in that, hardly at any at all, but I still had enough pressure there, but I didn't jab at it. I don't want to jab at it on a very delicate shot. I want to be consistent. If I wanted to hit in a little grabbing shot, I'd have a little bit more of a squeak because I'd have a little bit of a little bit of um, real connection, a little bit of clamp on the ball. See, that's taken two hops and it's just skidded to a screaming stop. Okay, one more. So, set up. Feel it. Just want to hit a... You want to increase that squeak all the way down. Or more to the point, make more noise. I mean, that's a great shot. But I'm not, uh, I'm not squeezing it as hard as I can. So it's a good test. It's a good practice mechanism just for me as well. I can't really squeeze this one. See those balls, they're all like a foot apart. Now after you've done that for maybe, I don't know, half an hour, got the feel of it, you then go to a longer club a five iron and whereas I haven't got the the squeaker here I've got the feeling of the squeaker still being here I've got the same connection feeling now, there's a lot of clamp on that you get a lot of clamp on that on that shot because you've got this connection and the body's releasing the club for you. There's lots of connection on that and they're very, very straight shots. Okay, ramp it up to a full shot.
It's very windy here today, but that ball is just absolutely boring through the wind. Yeah, the shot is so clean, guys. And you notice that my there's no jump in my golf swing because there's no jump in the body. The body doesn't jump. The chest doesn't jump, but the arms can jump and the hands can jump. But if you keep everything moving at the same rate as your, your chest or this quadrant here, there's no jump in the shot. And once I get the connection here and I've started my downswing with my lower body, all I do then is turn my tummy through the ball. I drive and then I just turn my tummy through the back. I will hit a full shot. So we got our full release there, but I had lots of connection. Lots of connection, but lots of leg drive. Lots of connection, lots of leg drive. Now the left arm, and guys, the people have problem with chicken wing. Chicken wing happens because you've got no connection. When you come through here, there's no connection, the arm does that. If you've got connection, you can't chicken wing, because the arm's here. This arm must fold up. It must fold up. It's got to go this way. You can't chicken wing it. So for any of you guys that chicken wing, this is a great exercise for the chicken wingers. Right, we'll bust this. Nice release drive under. See, there's the full golf swing. And then what you'll notice is that tempo is the same as my wedge tempo because my body only moves at this rate. It can't go any faster. The only time you get a differential in tempo, guys, is when you've got your hands running off at a different rate. My hands can't move any faster than my arms, and my arms can't move any faster than my chest. That's very windy. We'll just bust this fiber line down there. That's as good as old JH can hit it. Guys, my, my striking, I feel it leaving me sometimes. Like, What's happening? So the hit's not there and it's only because this is getting off by itself. You can't have that. You must maintain the connection. If you want to be an accurate, solid hitter, if, some, if you want to bust it in long drive or be a really long hitter, this is not the swing for you. Because, you know, you'll want to get up here in the backswing, you'll want to disconnect here, like Bubba does, get the arm here. You'll notice that my plane's the same on every shot I hit. My arms never get above my shoulders because I swing on one plane because I'm connected. But if you want to be moderate length and very straight and very solid, this is the way to hit it. So I will really bust this one. It's so straight. Crazy straight. Hey, lots of connection this time. I'll feel a squeak in my mind, even though there's no squeak mechanism here. But I'll feel it in my... in my... Physiology. Hit one this way. Guys, this is called external rotation. When I drive, I try and drive that way. A lot of guys will advocate driving this way, like Greg Norman did, Hogan did to a degree. But I just think if you've got limited flexibility, the, the external rotation is better. Okay, we'll really hammer this one, and I'll show you how connected I can be with a hammer shot. Now you'll probably say, J.H., that didn't look like you hammered it. Well, that's gone 20 yards longer, and my hammer is a result of um, just more, better contact. It's not a result of hitting the ball harder, it's just better contact. That's gone 20 yards longer.
lots of impact uh, connection there. Okay, we'll just run back over it as a revision. Just get your wedge or an iron iron. Just gonna hit a little 50, 60 yard shot. Look at this guy, see how the arm folds up? Well, chicken wingers need to fold your arm. Chicken wingers have it out here. But that's so straight, because the blades, it's a bit like the, the gate post and the gate swinging off the, off the post with the hinge. Here's our gate post here, here's our top of the gate and here's our hinge. Keep that there, club must come back dead square. It's that simple guys. The club is exactly the same as it was at the dress because the chest is coming back the same. The arms are not running off on a different angle. So see if we can hit the flag. There's a lot of grab on that. Low biting type shot. Amazing grab on a little shot like that. Okay. So that's going in two stop. Well on the second hop it just grabs so hard. It doesn't go very high. But it, it's just clamped with so much authority. Okay, we hit the same shot with connection but the, it'll be a nice soft shot. A little high soft one. Look at that. Now that's the two hops and a little kick to the right because a little bit of cut spin on it. But beautiful. Now you can hit a full shot, keep it, but drop it after you've made contact. And there's the full wedge. But here the Woo! Okay guys, it's just a I think it's a great piece of gear. It costs a couple of bucks, but it really and you can work with your right arm. I I've never hit any shots with my right arm. Never tried it. I don't know what the advantage would be. I don't know. Let's try a little one with the right arm. Wow. That help, if you're someone that lets your right arm get away on the downswing, that's the way to go. Wow. Okay, that's something you learn every day. I've never tried it for that. But that really does keep the arm tucked in. A lot of tuck in there. That's really strong. I'll hit a full shot. That's a funny feeling for me with my right arm because I like to force my right arm forward. So maybe it's maybe it's good for little shot. Um, I haven't never done it in the right arm, so it feels a bit weird. But those little pitch shots were great. Okay, little full shot. Finish. Best shot of the day. So that's gone as far as an eight on, and that looks a very leisurely swing, doesn't it? Okay guys, that's the dog bone squeak connection. Give it a go. But make sure you do it when there's no one around, otherwise you'll get some funny looks. <laughs>